what is up guys and welcome back to my channel thank you so much for clicking i'm truly truly grateful if this is your first time seeing me do me a favor by clicking the subscribe button so we can grow this channel together and for those who have been watching my videos thank you so so much i really appreciate you all so guys today i'm in this beautiful park supposedly alone because i haven't seen anyone around and i'm just stopping to have a rest after a nice ride out it's a really hot day it's about 36 degrees celsius so as you can see i'm not in my riding jacket but i just thought i should relax here and while i do so just tell you a little bit about my riding history here in china so first off let me just say that i've been in china for so many years and um there's been ups, ups and downs, but I would say the ups are more than the downs. And no matter where you are, you have to just keep going and make what you have work for you. Uh, let me go back to my riding history. So I first got my motorcycle riding license here in China in 2011. So that tells you how long I've been here. I went through the license acquisition process, wrote the test, passed it and got my first license in 2011. So in China, when you get a driver's license, it's valid for the first six years. And then after the first six years, you renew it for another 10 years. So first renewal is valid for 10 years. And then the third renewal is for a lifetime. So that's how it goes here in China. Now, after I got my license, I was so excited. And the very first bike that I bought here in China was a local brand called Dayun, D-A-Y-U-N. And it was a 125cc motorcycle. And I really loved that bike because it was my first bike. I started on a bicycle and when I got a motorcycle, it, was, it became way easier to move around, to go to work and all that. And I went on very, very long journeys on that bike. I once went on a 1,200 kilometer journey on that bike, taking me a few days to arrive and a few days ride back. And I never had any problems. Being a 125cc bike, it was very easy on gas maintenance cost was very very low and overall i just really loved the bike because it never gave me any problems and it took me from point a to point b it was just one that one time that i went on a long trip on that motorcycle otherwise it was basically just commuting to and from work and it did the job i mean i had that bike from 2011 until 2014 when I decided that it was time to switch to something more powerful. I had intentions of changing the bike, but I didn't know specifically which bike I was going for. So there was one time I went to this motorcycle showroom and then I spotted the Benelli 300cc motorcycle. That's a TNT 302 motorcycle for the first time. And when I saw the price, I was so shocked. I'd never heard of Benelli before. That was the first time I saw the brand Benelli and any of their bikes. I sat on it and right away I fell in love with the bike because my current bike then was a 125cc and all of a sudden I was seeing a 300cc bike and the price at the time was something that I could afford. So I quickly made a decision and a few days later I sold the old bike and bought the Benelli TNT 302. That bike also served me really well for a number of years. So for the first and second years, it was glorious. I went on long trips on that bike as well. You will see some pictures rolling on the screen showing you some of the trips that I made with that and on that bike. So it served me really, really well and I really enjoyed it. But I don't know if anyone is familiar with the Benelli brand and I don't know if things have changed now, but my particular bike and at least from what I have read and seen from other reviews, the bike had so many little, little problems. I never had a problem with the engine, credit to Benelli for that, but other parts of the bike, it was like spending so much time at the repair shop rather than riding the bike. So I'll give you examples. So a few months after I got the bike, the front, one of the front brake calipers started leaking oil so that was replaced and then a few months down the line some of the functions of the instrument cluster stopped working so it was changed the whole cluster was changed and a few weeks later the new one also stopped working so it had to be changed again so the instrument cluster was changed twice 
The next thing was once I went to work, parked the bike, and after work I came out and I saw oil leaking from the front forks, one of the front forks. And so I had to take it back in for um, the oil to be refilled and to be sealed again. And then I rode it for several months and then the turn signal started flashing intermittently. So instead of having a rhythm, it was flashing intermittently, sometimes fast and sometimes slow. And it was so annoying if you're a biker or a driver, you know how annoying that can be when it confuses your mind. I went back to the dealership. They tried to find the flasher, relay, whatever. They tried to fix it, changed it. It worked for a while and then the problem came back. And I kept going back there on that problem. And at some point they just gave up. They were like, they're not sure how they can deal with this. And unfortunately, Benelli doesn't do well with after sales service. Once you buy the bike, there's really no place, at least in Shanghai, where you can go to a Benelli specialist. You just have to depend on the showrooms where you bought a bike from. And these showrooms are not specific for Benelli. They sell all different kinds of bikes. So when you go there with a problem, if they have to replace a part, they have to order it from Benelli. You have to wait for a few days and when it comes, the guy who is fixing it, he's not a Benelli specialist, so he's just doing it kind of a generic mechanic thing. And that problem stayed with me until I got rid of the bike because the flasher thing was never fixed. Another thing that I had to change was the flasher, the electric flasher. So there were times, especially in winter, that I come out, I want to start the bike, you press it, nothing happens, and there was no kickstart. So there was just no other way to start the bike. And this happened so many times and the electric starter was changed so many times. And in all these, I would say the only good thing about it is Benelli is now owned by a Chinese company. So the bikes are made here in China. And so it's very easy and very cheap to come across the parts for the bike online. You just go on the biggest e-commerce website, Taobao in China. You can buy any Benelli parts off the website. So it was really, really easy to get the parts. But that is not what any motorcyclist want to hear. You want to spend time riding the bike than fixing it. So in short, there were so many other problems that came along all these few years that I, I owned the bike. But the last straw to break the camel's back was the seat. So something strange happened. There was no cut in, this, in the leather, there was nothing. All of a sudden, each time I rode the bike and I got off the bike, my butt was soaked with water and what meant what it meant was that there was water in the seat apparently from washing the bike or maybe standing in the rain sometimes i usually cover my bike but of course when you ride out and you park somewhere and it rains you can't cover it so apparently water was getting into the cushions and after a while i just felt that the problems were too much so i decided to get rid of the bike so i started planning for something better and at this point, I was so demoralized that I didn't want to go in for any other brand besides the mainstream brands like Honda, Kawasaki, and all that. I was looking at the Kawasaki Versus 650 and the Honda CB500X, but a Honda CB500X, the ones that predate the upgraded 2019 version, I just didn't like a few things about them. The front wheel was still 17 inches and their turn signals were all still um, halogen bulbs or something like that and for me they just didn't look the design just didn't look pretty and because I am tall and I'm always I've always liked adventure bikes I was looking for something that was not too expensive but at the same time will offer me that ad adventure feel so just when I was about to decide Honda released the 2019 upgraded version this very bike of the CB500X and it came with exactly the features that I wanted a 19 inch front wheel, LED lights all around, and the overall design was just, it just caught my eye the first time I saw it. So I decided this was the bike that I was going to go for. The Kawasaki Versus 650 was too expensive for me at the time. It wasn't that expensive, but I just thought with the price difference, the CB500X was enough. And it was a Honda anyways. I just was tired of fixing bikes at workshops. So I was like, let me go in for a brand that will give me less problems and just go through regular maintenance and enjoy my riding. So that's how come I decided on the Honda CB500X. And I must say, since I got a CB500X, I couldn't be happier. The only things I've had to do was to add accessories that I want to make my ride comfortable. 
and also to do the regular maintenance and I do the regular maintenance at the Honda dealership here in Shanghai because it's not that expensive and um, no major changes have been done it's mainly changing the oil and replacing the oil filter uh, changing brake pads and topping up the coolant liquid so um, haven't really spent much on this bike and that is another good selling point of this Honda CB 500X maintenance cost is very low running cost is low it burns less gas than bigger adventure bikes and at this point I don't have the finances to go for a bigger adventure bike and if, if I did I don't have a use for those bikes right now I don't have the time and with all these COVID restrictions it's not easy to go on a long trips and all that so this is a perfect fit for me at this point in my life so that's all for now guys thank you so much for watching I truly appreciate you sticking around to the end of the video and uh, leave a comment I'll be glad to hear your story on how you started riding motorcycles and how the journey has been for you so far once again thank you so much for watching and again if this is your first time seeing my face I make motorcycle vlogging videos and have tons of videos make a date to see some of the videos on my channel don't forget to subscribe to the channel and if you enjoyed the video give the video a like until I see you in the next video guys ride legal ride safe always peace and I'm out.